welcome everybody to our first in the series of our uh, Thrive Abetus interviews. Today I am with Neve Downs and Emma O'Toole, who are the founding members of the Iris Diabetes Online. Welcome Neve, welcome Emma. And I'm going to start Thank off, you. Emma, you're welcome. Emma, I'm going to start off with you and ask you to tell us a little bit about your diabetes diagnosis story. Um, so I was diagnosed in October of 1988. Um, I was seven years of age at the time. I had been unwell for a number of weeks. Um, I was drinking a, an insane amount of water. Um, anytime I ate anything sweet, I felt ill. Um, and then I ended up getting a rash pretty much head to toe. Um, and my mother, well, I kept telling my mother I wasn't well at the time. There was a new baby in the house. And my mum thought I was looking for attention because I'd been the youngest for seven years. And then all of a sudden there was a new surprise in the house. Um, anyway, it continued on for another few weeks and she eventually brought me to the GP and we discovered that I was a type one diabetic. So fast forward then to about eight years ago, I went on an insulin bump. I had been injections up until that point. Um, so I went on an insulin bump eight years ago during pregnancy and best decision ever, uh, wouldn't turn back the clock, love my bum. And then last year I got the Dexcom and absolute another game changer for me. My HbA1c came down, I think it was like 1.5-ish percent in uh, less than six months. Um, and mine was quite high, so I was absolutely thrilled. Um, I didn't, to be fair, I didn't put in any extra massive efforts. It was just because it was sitting on my phone in front of me all the time. I was just checking it more often than I ever would have um, before. So just keeping a better eye and then obviously catching my highs and my lows quicker than I would have without having a Dexcom. So, yeah, that's basically my story. That's really interesting because when I um, when I got my Dexcom five years ago, I had the exact same experience and I was able to reduce my HbA1c but I hope by a whole percent as we were measuring back then. So yeah, they're definitely a game changer. So you hadn't mm -hmm. used a sensor with the insulin pump when you started on the pump eight years ago? No, I, I did during pregnancy. I had got a, I had the N light sensor. Um, and once I had my baby, about three months after I had the baby, um, I, I just, I took it off, didn't like it, didn't want it, and hadn't had one since. Um, okay. I did have a trial of the Libra, actually, I lie. I did have a trial of the Libra um, oh, a number of years ago, and I absolutely loved the Libra, but I couldn't afford to self-fund it, so I had to give it up. Um, mm -hmm. I self-funded it for like two months, um, but I really, really loved that. So. Oh, shame. And then, yeah. um, so you said moving from injections to insulin pump, but I bet when you were diagnosed in the 1980s, you were probably on two injections a day? Yeah, I would have been on two injections and very quickly moved to four, actually. I'd say probably within three to four years, um, I was up to four injections. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't <laughs> move till the year 2000 and I was diagnosed in 1993. Okay. So, wow. Yeah, no, different I'd say it was, early, it was probably folks. around 93, give or take, okay. that I was probably on the four. Um, yeah, I would have been early teens. So, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And thank you for sharing, Emma. And Neve, so your diagnosis story is a lot more recent than that. Do you yeah. want to take us through that? Sure. I um, I was diagnosed in 2008. Um, I had just come home from a holiday I'd gone to visit my brother in New Zealand and when I came home I just felt uh, I wasn't even that sick I just didn't feel great I felt a bit off I was my main concern was that I was off my food and I love my food <laughs> but I just had no appetite so after um after a few days I, I noticed that I was like really really thirsty as well and I just it was that unquenchable thirst that you hear about I just couldn't didn't matter and I had bought <laughs> a six pack of Lucozade <laughs> It does and gone back to my desk and work <laughs> and absolutely guzzled them. And I was still really, really thirsty. And I happened to mention it to a friend of mine whose mom was diabetic. And she was like, hmm, that's kind of alarm bells were going off for her. And I was like, oh, no, it's grand. I'm just thirsty. But anyway, she convinced me and I went to the doctor. 
um, who did, uh, she did like, oh, you probably just picked up a bug while you were away, but sure, while you're here, we'll check your, sugar, your blood sugar. So she checked my blood sugar and then she sent me off to do a urine test and I came back and she was like, right, yeah, we're just going to pop you off now to A&E. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I'm still feeling pretty okay. Like I just, like, as far as I was concerned, I've had worse hangovers. Like I just, I wasn't that bad. But uh, yeah, round in back to my boss to say, um, I have to go to a and E. <laughs> rang my mom in the taxi on the way there and was barely in the door, handed them in a letter and they had me brought through. And so they made it official. <laughs> so I was in for a few days trying to learn the ropes of insulin and all that it brought with it. So it was um, quite the shock to the system. Um but yeah, it was, it was just, I had no, apart from my friend's mom, who I didn't even really know, like I had no experience of diabetes at all, either type one, type two, knew nothing except for the stereotypes. So yeah. <laughs> it was a lot to learn, um, which I suppose leads on to the point of, I was looking for support and Facebook at the time was where everybody was. And um, I had a look and even though like Diabetes Ireland, the Diabetes Federation at the time, they were really supportive. I, d- I don't think they really had much of a presence on Facebook at that stage. So I was looking for other diabetics in Ireland and there didn't seem to be a group. So I set one up. <laughs> so, um, and it just, it just grew from there really. So. Yep. I actually, because I, I was also searching online for other people with diabetes, even though we had started the face-to-face support group here, it was still very small an isolated community and I thought well there has to be people online where are they so I would google you know people with diabetes in Ireland nearly every couple of days so then to to put that into google and to have this search pop up for this Facebook group I was absolutely thrilled so that was (laughs) that that was the beginning of the Irish uh, diabetes online community and it kind of yeah it really Sorry, was. <laughs> Pure selfishness on my part. <laughs> that's, no, that's, <laughs> that's where we all start. Um, so then it kind of, it, it grew very, very quickly. So I think at what point you decided that you, uh, I think you kind of asked about setting up or meeting up face to face back in the days when we uh, could do that. There was, <laughs> yeah. There was actually, it wasn't me. It was, it was led by people in the group. There was, I don't know, I got like, I don't know, quite a few requests anyway, within a very short space of time asking, was there a support group? Is there a support group or people meeting up? And as far as I was aware, no, there wasn't. And I was trying to find out. And I think that's when you kind of went, huh. (laughs) So Grania, I can't even remember how that happened. Oh, I do. Um, (laughs) So... As I said, I used to Google people with diabetes in Ireland, but I um, what predates the Facebook groups were boards.ie. And there was an actual thread on that for a diabetes chat. And I think, Emma, you posted in there asking, were there any groups meeting? Board groups. Yeah. Okay. So, so when Neve posted, would anybody be interested in setting one up or would anybody be interested in meeting? I basically remembered I'd seen the post in boards.ie and I think I just said, you know, Neve, this, this lady here and Emma, this lady here. And I think um, that was basically the extent of my involvement. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it might seem small, but... <laughs> yeah. Here yeah, we are, no, 10 years later. <laughs> it was very funny because I do remember sort of you saying that and I just sort of felt like none of setting up a group wasn't my idea. I, I was literally just asking, asking the question and then you were like, oh, here's another girl who's interested. <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> really I was just completely frustrated as well because I was on the other side of the country so you know I was like oh these people are meeting so you know and I couldn't get there but yeah Yeah. so do you do you remember the first time you guys met either online or face to face (laughs) we went for a coffee and I think we like spent hours we went for a coffee in Starbucks on Dawson Street yeah 
And we, we were like, we won't, I won't keep you. No, I won't keep you. And like two hours later, we're still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then, um, so I know the idea in the back of your minds were, was setting up a uh, support group or well known that you had the interest in the Facebook group. What mm-hmm. was actually the thing that actually made you take the next step to actually do I don't know, it? I think, I, I think kind of once we had, had agreed to meet, I think it was kind of a given we were going to at least give it a shot. <laughs> I, I, I kind of just took it as read that that's what the next step was going to be. So I think yeah. I suppose the fact that we were able to sit and talk for two hours and I had somebody who, who understood probably was unconsciously just cemented the idea that yeah this is <laughs> this is worth doing yeah I think I think we had that instant connection um yeah. not just being a type 1 diabetic but a type 1 diabetic needing help and support and just us as people just gelling yeah. instantly um and I suppose I, I, th- I remember us chatting going, I've never done this before. I've never done anything like this before. And I don't even know where to start. And I remember the two of us were kind of like, maybe we could contact this person or these people or where would we go? And how? Would we-? And then we ended up contacting Kieran O'Leary in Diabetes Ireland or Diabetes Federation at that point um, to see could they offer us a venue. This was like probably the November would have been in yeah, November well, time. Yeah ish and um yeah november 2010 and then we kind of had a few meetings after that and a few chats and stuff um and met with kieran and he agreed to give us a room in uh gardner street lower gardner street yeah yeah and then we had our first meeting in february yeah the first wednesday in february 2011 yeah (laughs) Do you remember what you talked about that first meeting? Do you remember how many people were there? What do you remember about it? I think we probably had about 15 people. But that's good. Yeah, it was a good turnout. Yeah. For the first meeting. More, more than we thought, Gronia. Yeah. More than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was more than we thought. And there was an awful lot of chit chat around the table. And... I know um, a diabetic friend of mine um, said to me after it, she said, look, it was a great meeting and everything, but you really need somebody to chair it and you really need somebody to kind of keep things in order. So we were like, okay, we were, we were more than happy to take the feedback, you know, because we wanted it to be a success and we wanted it to work. Um, but yeah, way more. I, I just remember being really overwhelmed when I saw the amount of people walking into the room. I was, yeah, yeah, we had yeah. to get getting more chairs. Can we, can we get more chairs? Can we get more? Couldn't believe it. Obviously, yeah. well before COVID, we were all allowed to be in a tiny room yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> and we had um, Susan from yes. Cork came up. She did the first, yeah. our first meeting. Yeah. Can you hear my doorbell? Yeah. 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 Go on, you're okay. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha